2 Chronicles 9, 13-31 Devotional Focus Verse Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold, beside that which chapmen and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. 2 Chronicles 9, 13 and 14 A couple of years ago, my husband and I had the opportunity to visit the Winter Palace in Russia, located on the banks of the Neva River in St. Petersburg. From the 1760s until 1917, the Winter Palace was the main residence of the Russian Tsars. Today, this marvel of Baroque architecture houses the Hermitage Museum and an incomparable collection of artifacts numbering over three million items. While the furnishing and artifacts were impressive, it was the amount of gold that amazed me beyond words. Never in my life had I seen or imagined so much gold in one place. The opulence was quite literally staggering. The palace is huge. 700 feet long and 100 feet high, with 176 sculptured figures along the roofline that add to the building's striking appearance. While we did not begin to see them all, we were told that the palace has 1,786 doors, 1,945 windows, 1,500 lavishly decorated halls and rooms, and 117 staircases. Built in the shape of a rectangle, with inner windows and doors opening onto an enclosed garden courtyard, it truly is an amazing sight. On the day of our visit, we joined a stream of other tourists being rapidly ushered from one ornate area to the next by guardians of the palace. Elaborate features of gold and other precious materials dazzled our eyes. However, the second largest room in the Winter Palace the armorial hall stands out in my memory. The walls of this enormous chamber, originally the place where official ceremonies and weddings were held, are lined with immense fluted columns of gold. The magnificent inlaid floor, made from 16 varieties of rare wood, is polished to an almost mirror-like gloss. Huge crystal chandeliers hang from the coffered white and gold ceilings and ornate matching sconces adorn the walls. The luxury we viewed that day made me think of Solomon's wealth described in today's text. King Solomon's fortune dwarfed that of every person who lived before him. He was the richest person in the world of his day. He reigned for 40 years and we are told that every year he received 666 talents of gold. This did not include income derived from business and trade, nor the annual tribute paid to him by the kings and governors of surrounding nations. His wealth was so tremendous that during his reign, silver was no more valued than common stones. Pondering this kind of wealth made me think of the testimony of Bill Cripps, a veteran in our church. As a young man, Bill began to count the cost of serving God. He thought to himself, If I should gain the whole world, live to be a ripe 100 years old without an ache or a pain or a care of any kind, and then spend all of eternity in that lake of fire and brimstone, where the Bible says the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, I would have missed everything. The Winter Palace in St. Petersburg was built for the Empress Elizabeth, the daughter of Peter the Great, but she died before the palace was completed. The workers who maneuvered the huge fluted columns in the armorial hall into place have long since stepped into eternity. The artisans who crafted the sculpted figures along the roof line are gone. Even the czars who lived in this amazing structure have departed from this world. Where are they spending eternity? Bill Cripps had the right perspective, and it is one we should all strive to keep in mind. Wealth, like that of Solomon or the Russian czars, may last for a lifetime, but after a lifetime comes eternity. Let us purpose to live our lives for God, and then when we step into eternity, we will forever enjoy blessings that are truly beyond description. Background Information 
This concluding portion of chapter 9 gives several examples of Solomon's revenues, trade ventures, and immense wealth. See verses 13 through 28 and completes the summary of Solomon's 40-year reign with an account of his death. See verses 29 through 31. Verse 13 relates that 666 talents of gold came to Solomon in one year. The weight of a talent varied by region, date, and type from 65 to 135 pounds. At a minimum, Solomon's annual salary would have surpassed 43,000 pounds in gold or about $1 billion at current prices. Added to this, the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. The word chapman in verse 14 means traitors. The writer of 2 Chronicles went on to provide further examples of Solomon's wealth and prosperity. Verse 16 states that he made 300 shields of beaten gold. We are told in 1 Kings 10.17 that three pounds of gold went to one shield. So the value of just one of these shields perhaps would have been comparable to that of an expensive car in our day. The targets mentioned in verse 15 were even larger shields, probably designed to cover the whole body, and Solomon had 200 of them. While these shields no doubt made awe-inspiring displays in the house of the forest of Lebanon, they were merely ornamental. They would have been of no use in battle, as gold was both too heavy and too soft a metal to provide effective protection. Solomon's great throne of ivory, overlaid with gold, described in verses 17 through 19, would have been a spectacular sight. It had six steps as an ascent to the seating area and was flanked on both sides by six lions representing the twelve tribes of Israel. At the conclusion of the description of Solomon's great wealth, the statement is made in verse 28 that they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt. This was in direct disobedience to God's command in Deuteronomy 17.16, which stated that the king of Israel shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. In the closing verses of this chapter, the writer omitted any reference to Solomon's idolatry, his multiple marriages, and the heavy taxation he imposed upon the people. He simply reported that Solomon reigned for 40 years, that he died and was buried in the city of David, and that his son Rehoboam succeeded him on the throne. Conclusion While we do not have the material wealth of Solomon or the Tsars of Russia, we can obtain treasures beyond compare in eternity if we stay true to God through our lifetime on earth. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold, beside that which chapmen and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one target. And three hundred shields made he of beaten gold, three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and stays on each side of the sitting place, and two lions standing by the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, none were of silver, it was not anything accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Horam, every three years once came the ships of Tarshish bringing gold, and silver, ivory, and apes, and peacocks. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon, to hear his wisdom, that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and raiment, harness, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. 
and Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt, and out of all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Edo the seer against Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead.